Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about a topic called physical evidence. So a total of 12 physical evidence will be discussed in this particular part 1 video. 6 of them will be discussed and rest 6 will be discussed in the part 2 video. So let's get started. So first we must know what physical evidence is. So to define that we can say that physical evidence which is also known as real evidence or material evidence is a tangible object which can tie the defendant, the witness or the victim to the crime scene. So simply said physical evidence is something that we can see or feel physically so it is a tangible object that is objects that we can touch and feel and these evidences can act as a direct link between the victim and the witness and the defendant and they can link all these three to the crime scene that we are concerned with physical evidence helps the examiner or the investigator to recreate the crime scene and infer the sequence of events that might have taken place. So with the help of evidences, an investigator or the person who is examining the particular crime can recreate the crime scene or reconstruct the crime scene. We often heard about reconstruction of the crime scene taking place. So in that, what do we need for that? We need physical evidence for that. And with the help of these evidences, we can actually determine the sequence as in what happened first, where did the culprit go first and then where he might have gone and then what he might have done and all of that. So sequence of events can also be determined. Now there can be many types of physical evidences. So some of which that I am going to discuss are blood, documents, drugs, explosives, fiber, firearm and ammunition, glass, hair, fingerprint, impression, organ and bodily fluid and soil. So in this video first six will be discussed. So the most commonly found evidence at the crime scene is blood. All of us know what blood is. Blood is a red color substance that is present in our body in approximately 5 liter amount and it is responsible for carrying all the nutrients and hormones and toxin from one place to another oxygen gases etc right and blood can be found easily in crime scenes or crime where some kind of weapon has been used for example a knife or a gun etc or some kind of struggle has happened between the victim or the culprit so we can find blood at the crime scene in form of blood stains and these stains can be of three types passive transfer and projected or impact stains so i'm not going to go in detail since we are discussing just the physical evidences so just to know passive stains are the stains that includes drops like this drops like these or drip or clots blood clots or pool of blood and typically how are these formed these are formed due to the action of gravity for example if someone have had some kind of injury in the hand so the blood will ooze out and it will directly fall on the ground because of what because of gravity so it happens because of gravity then there are transfer stains as the name is suggesting it uh, the blood has been transferred from one place to another for example here in this case the blood has been transferred to the hand and then to the wall and uh, similarly shoe prints can also lead to transferring of blood stains also it can simply get transferred from the clothes that we're wearing or from bag or from anything literally anything since it's a liquid then comes impact stain which results when blood flows out in a form of spatter or arterial spurts pushes or splashes here you can see i have attached a picture for impact stain spatter and these are of three types low velocity medium velocity and high velocity and you can see the differences in the spatter formation depending upon the velocity with which the impact has taken place Next up we have documents. So first we must know what a document is. So anything that has something written over it or printed over it or it is an electronic matter that has some words over it or some lines or whatsoever 
then that acts as a document so anything written or printed is actually giving us some kind of information right let's say a book a book has various lines and sentences paragraphs written over it what are those doing they are giving us some kind of information right similarly if we take example of a will then what is a will doing will is giving us information that okay a person is um, giving his or her property or whatever or whatever thing to uh, this person after the death and all of that so any piece of written printed or electronic matter that is giving us some kind of information is called as a document now when a document is produced before the court then such document is considered as documentary evidence now obviously if a document is used as an evidence and it is presented in a court in order to prove something then that is going to act as a documentary evidence in that case a normal document will become an evidence example of documents can be a paper like paper simply like this can act as a document cards can act debit cards credit cards or a pan card or any kind of id card can act as a document then book why because all these things have something written over it cards also is depicting depicting something there's a card number there's name of the person to whom the card belong to all of that right a book can be a document will can be a document checks bank statements as signatures over it there's account number written and there's many additional information that is available on all of these things letter stamp so all of these act as a document and when a document helps in a particular case then that becomes a documentary evidence next up we have drugs so first of all we all must know what drugs are so drugs are substances that change a person's mental or physical state so in short drug can be defined as a chemical substance which when taken in by the body is going to lead to some changes these drugs are going to bind to various receptors that are present in our body and then it is either going to lead to production of something stimulate something in our body or it is going to decrease something or depress something in our body so due to which what will happen is that the way we feel or the way we behave or the way we understand things or our senses are going to get affected right so either we'll feel very energetic or we'll feel very lethargic sleepy and all of that so example of drugs can be alcohol tobacco heroin opium amphetamines ecstasy etc so these drugs can also be formed at the crime scene for example in rape cases we can determine that okay the person was given this kind of drug and then we can maybe go and see who is the supplier who could be the possible supplier of the drug in that area or what is the possible cause of death of a person which drug the person took that led to death of that person right so drugs can also act as an evidence now next is explosive so explosive can be defined as any kind of substance or device that can be made to produce a volume of rapidly expanding gases in extremely brief periods so we all know what explosives are explosives are material which when given certain kind of heat or force leads to production of a large amount of sound large amount of gases are produced pressure is tremendously increased and a lot of heat is generated so all these things tend to happen when an explosive explodes forensic analysis of explosions consist of determining the point of origin the explosive substance involved the charge mass so in order to determine what exploded we need to know what was the point of origin as in where did the explosion take place and what substance was involved in that explosion what substance was used to make the building blast right so in that case the explosive material that we find at that particular scene is actually going to link us with the perpetrator how because we are going to start linking okay let's say dynamite was used so who are the suppliers of dynamite in that area then we can go to the suppliers ask them who came to them to buy a certain large amount of dynamite from them and that will lead us to the possible culprits so example of explosives can be dynamite nitroglycerin picric acid lead aside mercury fulminate or formulate of mercury black powder etc 
Next evidence can be a fiber. So before starting with fiber, we must know what fiber is. So fiber is a very thin, long, flexible and hair or thread like structure that we see in our clothes or in anything that is made up of a fabric. So here I have put on a picture of a, a fiber. As you can see, it is a very thin like substance. So basically fibers can we can say that fibers are the building blocks of fabrics. So fibers are first turned into a yarn and then that yarn is further turned into a fabric. And this fabric leads to production of various materials like this, this and this. These fibers can also act as evidences how because of Locard's principle of exchange when two person wearing some kind of clothes comes in contact with each other they are going to exchange the fibers mm -hmm. and when these cloth pieces are minutely examined we can actually determine the person that they have come in contact with by comparing the fibers so that is how fibers can act as an evidence and the perpetrator won't even know because they are so minute that normally human eye tends to ignore that. Fibers can also be of two type natural and synthetic. Natural can further be of two type animal fibers and plant fibers. Plant fibers can include cotton, jute and um, animal fibers can include wool, silk etc. Synthetic fibers are the man-made fibers. They can include nylon, polyester, acrylic, rayon etc. Example of fibers can be like fibers are used in cloth making carpet blanket pillow shawl handkerchief etc next we have firearm and ammunition so firearm is one of the most commonly used weapon for committing any crime and for that we require ammunition firearm evidence can help to identify which gun fired a particular bullet so if we are getting a particular bullet at the crime scene or a cartridge case at the crime scene then with the help of that with the help of the indentations or the scratch marks over the surface of the bullet we can determine which gun was actually responsible for firing that and if we have got the gun then we can easily from that gun determine who the culprit is who's the one who fired the gun because of course the gun belongs to that person also the distance from which a weapon may have been fired can also be determined muzzle to target distance muzzle mm -hmm. area is this area right and the target distance that is where the vi victim was present so it can be used to possibly determine who may have handled the firearm of course how because the firearm are also going to have the fingerprints over them right or DNA also in certain cases. Example of firearms can be handguns, for example, revolvers, pistols, and shotguns. And uh, ammunitions can be bullets or pallets. Ammunitions like bullets and pallets can be found at the crime scene. So all of these can act as evidences. So this was all for this video. These were the six physical evidences. Rest of the six evidences will be discussed in the part two video. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.